what's up guys it is the start of a new week and i'm really excited because i'm going to be starting my 10 deck profiles for all the new rulers it's going to be monday through friday this week and monday through friday next week which is exactly 10 days that includes varia and melgis but i'll probably do them last i don't have a particular order for the other um seven i guess not counting arla since that's today and varia and melgis being last rulers but um uh if you guys want you can just kind of leave a comment in the bottom section below so let me know which one you'd want to see tomorrow and maybe i could just go off what you guys say it doesn't really matter to me so i'll just make whatever um you guys want to see uh before i get started with anything for the video remember that if you guys do want one of these awesome top loaders once again i'm using bulbasaur this time because bulbasaur is my favorite starter from the first season he's the most underrated and i love him but if you guys want one of these cool top loaders make sure to make a purchase at core tcg for at least 20 dollars and put the word top loader in the comment section below um, it's really really cool because these are really awesome. Um, I love that because rulers don't have stamp size It kind of makes up for it and I should have probably used one for an example But Bulbasaur is way too cool. So we're gonna use Bulbasaur and then um, I'd also like to say that starting from now on I'm going to be having the deck list in the description So for those people who wanted a copy of the deck list, it's now going to be in the description for all of my videos um, I'm not gonna go back and update all of the old ones But from this point on it will be and there will no longer be too long didn't watch versions of my videos It'll just be this long one and with the description for the decklist in the bottom so um it saves you guys time about uh to watch through a whole second video and stuff and it's just easier for me uh, i don't have to film two different videos so we're just gonna start doing it that way i'm also still in the middle of revamping everything you guys might have noticed a new intro but um there's still gonna be a couple more changes to the channel but i haven't really figured everything out yet and with it um no other kind of announcements or anything i'm just gonna hop straight into the deck profile so Arla is a very interesting ruler. On the ruler side, it's pay 2 light to J-activate, and on uh, the second effect is an activate ability for pay 2 light. Target resonator with flying, you control gains plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Uh, you see Arla used a lot with angels, but um, I kind of wanted to go, uh, it's not too much of a different route because I do have angels in this, but um, it's a very, very unique deck list, like, deck list I guess you could say, and um, it's not something I feel like you'd see very often, and it's something you kind of have to test because... It is very, very, um, it looks really weird on paper, but in practice, it's actually really good. Um, I went to a, just a local tournament at Core TCG yesterday, and we ended up splitting uh, for top four just because we were all pretty much friends, and we just thought it'd be cooler if everyone got some packs, so we just split top four. Um, my record was kind of weird. I had one loss, two draws, and one win. It was out of four, but I'm really confident that um, two of those draws could have possibly been a win. Uh, one of them was a lot harder of a matchup against a Blazer deck that was really well made. So that one, I'm not too sure how Game 3 would have gone, but uh, one of the draws was against a really cl uh, close friend of mine who I completely messed up on Game 1. Uh, we were just kind of laughing the whole time. I didn't tap for his stone three times, like a uh, little past mid-game. So it was kind of just like a lot of horsing around, and um, it was kind of what it is. But um, for me, just testing the deck and going against uh, really good decks, I think um, I think it did very well, and I think it has a lot of potential. And I made some changes since then. But talking about the J Ruler side, um, Arla has flying. You can't see it because of the stamp, but it does have flying. Um, when it enters the field, you can search your main deck for an angel. Um, I run three angels in this deck, and I'll get into it when I get into the resonators. But um, that's not always why I flip Arla. Um, the god ability I think is incredible. It's too light and too colorless. It says whenever a J resonator you control attacks this turn, this card deals 400 damage to target resonator your opponent controls for each time J slash resonators you control attack this turn. Play god ability rain of arrows only once per turn. Um, what's important to note about this effect is because it applies to the field and it says whenever a resonator has attacked, that means even if I let's say attack with the Cheshire Cat, which is of course zero attack, and they decide, of course I'm not going to block because it's Cheshire, and then I play the God, God ability um, after the Cheshire has attacked, my next attack will do 800. So for just to clarify on the effects, and some people may be confused, the way the effect works in general is every time something attacks, you amplify it by 400. So it's 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000, 2400, and so on. So every time something attacks, you just do damage to something uh, before it can block and before a blocker has been specified, um, kind of like Lancelot 700. So if you attack with Cheshire and you haven't used the God ability, and then you use the God ability and attack with something else, it will be 800 damage, not 400. So um, I think that's really important because you can kind of play some sort of mind game. If they see you attacking, they're going to be like, okay, why is he attacking? But it's just so you can stack up higher damage and not waste the first 400 and maybe have them block something you don't want them to. So that's really interesting to note too. Uh, something really important about Arla too is its interaction with Almiris. 
uh, because the bow says you can remove four counters, it gets four counters first of all if you have Arla as your ruler, but because you can remove four to kill a J slash resonator with flying, you can just use Almiris to give their card flying and then kill it. So um, what I did against the Blazer player was um, I J activated Arla search for an angel to make it seem like I'm just setting up my churn, but essentially I just wanted them to lead into destroying Arla with Blazer. And so when they deactivated Blazer and killed Arla, I then gave it flying and shot it with an arrow, which means he can't produce redstones. And um, he has Scorched Bales, but it, he only had two at the moment, and he needed three for the Blazers he had removed. So um, it really did help stun them for a while, especially um, uh, there might be Blazer decks out there that don't run any red. Uh, they might be really confident that they're not going to lose their Blazer. And being able to kind of make it seem like you're going for the plus off the Angel, you're setting up your God ability but baiting them into deactivating just to kill him with Almiris is a really good play. Um, other than that, I'm not going to talk too much more about Arla. Um, it's kind of, I'm mainly using this for the bow itself. I think the bow with Arla is the greatest Regalia in the game right now. Uh, maybe only matched up by something like Deep Blue. But um, I'm just going to get straight into the stones now. So for the stones, I'm running an Almiris. Like I said, being able to give your cards flying is incredible, but giving their stuff flying and killing it with the bow is even better. Essentially, you're not losing any resource other than a bow that costs zero to be able to remove any threat in the game, uh, including J Rulers, which I think is just crazy. Um, I'm running uh, white blues. Uh, the entire deck is mainly blue with um, a decent amount of light in it, but I'm comfortable with only having four light. And then the other five stones are literally just mono blue. Um, I wanted to stay out of splits range because I thought Vlad was already going to be a problem and the last thing I wanted is to be able to lose to uh, Vlad decks and burn decks so I wanted to have a really good uh, matchup against Vlad and uh, because I actually have sided splits um, I run deep blue so these actually count as red and I don't have enough to hurt me not only that but angels can also heal so um, this stone lineup made a lot of sense to me because I wanted to be safe from split and still have a lot of answers to everything else and then deep blue fixes the mana curve problem so um, I haven't had any problems with having the uh, correct stones I mean maybe once or twice I might have hit a, a light vapors a little too late and hit the it's a light blue stone so I kind of maybe had like a Percival in hand or something that I wish I could have used turn one but I had to use it around turn two or three but it never cost me the game I've never had a situation where I've hit too many of these and just been like oh I can't do anything plus there's kind of another route to fix that as well, and I'll get into it when I get into the spells. So my Resonator lineup is going to seem extremely weird, but it really is effective. Um, I, like I said, tested this for a while, and it works really good. I have three Alice's Little Scout because I do run Deep Blues. Alice's Little Scout says you can um, draw a card if this card is destroyed. So um, it essentially just keeps fixing your hand while still having a searchable one drop that makes Gwyber cost less, and it's searchable by Deep Blue. I use uh, four Cheshire Cats. Uh, Cheshire is just really great because um, a lot of the times there is angels in this deck that I might see too early. Even, like I said, even though I only run uh, one of each, sometimes it'll just kind of hit you when you least expect it. And it's really nice to drop uh, Cheshire, put it on top of your deck, and then drop Percival. Um, I really like the idea of using Percival because on enter, Percival lets you check the top five cards of your deck and uh, add a Regalia or Knight amongst them to your hand and the rest goes on the bottom of your deck. So what I do is... I use Cheshire to stack, let's say something like an Angel, that I can of course search out with Arla later. Or um, if I have, let's say, Dignified uh, Seraph, and I put it on top of my deck, use Percival to put it on the bottom. And then deactivate Arla, grab Celestial, and then when I play Celestial, it'll grab Dignified. It really makes it so that that combo always goes off. I've literally not once drawn into Dignified too early, or never been able to play both with the effect of Celestial. So it's always worked so far, I've never had an issue with it. Um, not to mention I also run 8 Regalia, so this is great. I run 3 Cinderella. I was running 4 yesterday, but I decided to make this 3. Um, it's an amazing card, I just thought because I have a lot of draw power and a lot of deck thinning, it doesn't seem like a problem, and I kind of kept seeing maybe one too many of these. Um, so I thought 3 would be a better number. Uh, on enter, Cinderella gains a, a glass counter, and it, it becomes 8-8, eight, eight, and because it, it gives the glass counter gives it 600 attack, so it becomes 8-8. Eight, eight. And if you do any damage to Cinderella, even to, to another Resonator, she loses the counter. But having a 2-drop 8-8 eight, eight, and having it just block something that's really strong like a Lancelot and still stay alive, or um, being able to attack into something and kill it is just really great. Um, you can also play 2 blue to return this card to your hand. Uh, that actually is a lot better than you might think. I never really do it just to kind of reuse it, but there was a situation where um, I was playing a friend and Cinderella was the only card um, on my field. 
and I had, I think it was a bed of yours, something I wanted to keep in my hand, and he played Soul Hunt, and I returned this to my hand, and then discarded it, because I had no more um, monsters to banish, so it, there's just like a lot of weird interactions with Cinderella that are really good. Um, there was a moment where I didn't have the mana open for it, because I only had one and I needed two, but I had um, Cinderella and, I mean, I had three instead of four. But I had Cinderella and Deep Blue, and uh, I got spiraled, and I was thinking I'd much rather return this to my hand and use Deep Blue to search Little Scout and drop those two cards and the two cards I had in my hand. I don't remember what they were, but um, it's just a lot of interaction you can do with this against Dark Decks that I think is really good. Moving on to the Angels, I have one Celestial Wing Seraph. Uh, this card on Enter uh, puts a level 4 lower Angel from your deck into the field, and the only target right now that's really worth it is Dignified Seraph. Um, it's just an 8-8 with flying, no additional effect, but when Celestial attacks, it gains you gain 300 life for every angel you control, counting itself. So even with this, just these two, it's um 600 life gain, which is pretty great. Not to mention they're both 1,000-1,000 uh, with flying and 8-8 flying. And then we have Little Angel of Armala. Um, this card's also really great because it's a one-drop for Gwyver. Um, it kind of just makes the cost go down if you see it early. Um, there's also times where I've hit a Light Vapor and had this turn 1 and got in a good like 900 to 1200 damage before they removed it off the field so um because this just keeps flying over everything and if they try to attack i have like cheshires and everything so um it worked really well i mean it's also like i said if you've already sometimes because i do run water and there's a decent amount of draw power in this deck i'll draw the one celestial early and just play it to grab dignify without searching it with arla but i still want to be able to deactivate arla and grab little angel because it's just a plus for essentially deactivating which sets up the god ability anyway and um not to mention, like I said about that blazer play where you can kind of trick them into deactivating. If I grab Little Angel, they might think I'm going to try to play it to have an extra one drop to use the god ability or something. And they might want to just deactivate early to get rid of it to make it seem like, oh, he's grabbing the angel for a reason. Um, we should do something about it. But um, that kind of baits them in and then you kill it. And then I have three Gwybers. Uh, Gwyber is really great in this deck because there is a lot of low drops. Um, Percival, Cheshire also search it. I mean, not search it out, but Cheshire can uh, dig for Gwyber, so can I have 4Cs in here. Uh, so 4C can do it as well. Um, the only problem I had is I forgot completely about Susano, which kind of really wrecked um, this idea. But I have a side deck that's kind of prepared to take out Gwybers. Uh, one Snow White. Like I said, I have Deep Blue, so using the red isn't a problem. Uh, Snow White's really great because with the bow, the bow can remove just one counter to do 400 to a target blocker or attacker, and Cinderella can do 300 to a Resonator when she attacks. So um, if I attack with Cinderella, I mean with Snow White, and they decide to block with something like, let's say, a Lancelot, I can shoot it with 400 with one of the arrows from the bow, and then use Snow White's effect and do 300, and it's essentially killing something with at least 700 defense. And if it's like, let's say, a Gwyber that's uh, attempting to block you, that's 700 plus her 500 first strike, that's 1200 and it'll die. So Snow White's really great, and I didn't have this yesterday and I really regretted it because it's so good. And with just one, I really don't mind. Um, I'm not going to see it too early and I'll have Deep Blue set up any other time. And Maryville hasn't been a problem at all. Um, I played against a deck that had four Maryvilles and every time it destroyed one of my uh, Deep Blues or, or the Bows, I really didn't feel bad about it because I have so much draw power then not only am I going to see a second Deep Blue before they're more likely to see a uh, Mary Bell, but I'd rather them use their Mary Bell to just banish it and destroy my card and then me just recover from drawing or searching with Arla or whatever it is and just get more board state than have them put it actually as a 10-10 in the field. Uh, one Etna. Um, this won me a game against Vlad. I tapped all of their Elvish Priests and it just did really, really well. Um, I mainly have this also because I can side into Alice, which can search this at when I need it, but... With all the deep blues also, um, sometimes you do have too many in your hand, but there's so much draw power that I never feel like it's kind of hindering my hand. So if I have to discard it for a blue mana and then use that for Etna's effect, I actually don't mind at all. And then um, one Bedivere. So Bedivere on enter removes a card from the game that has at least a thousand attack. Uh, it's an optional effect, so if they don't have any cards and you just want a 7-7 seven, seven target attack, you can use this. Uh, what makes Bedivere also really good is because his stats are pretty well, uh, there was a time where I was able to use Almiris on it to give it flying and swing for 7, which is really good. Uh, same with Etna, using Almiris on her and doing damage means they're going to have to discard a card, which I actually got off twice. Uh, it was really, really good. Um, and Benavir is just another target for Percival to hit. I had two earlier, but I removed it by one because I thought the light was kind of hard to have at times. So um, I just left it at one. And those are all the resonators. Moving on to the spells, I have for Armis the God's Bow. 
Uh, in my opinion, like I said, this is the greatest regalia of all if you do have Arla as your ruler. Uh, the, the card actually says if you do have Arla as your ruler, you get four counters instead of two. It normally gets two arrow counters, but with Arla it's four. If you remove one, you can deal 400 damage to a target um, blocking or attacking resonator. If you remove two, you can destroy an addition, uh, must be addition resonator, not field, uh, but you can destroy an addition resonator or a chant standby card. And if you remove four, which of course you can only get to if you have Arla, you can destroy a target J slash resonator with flying. So not only is that great, uh, of course, against Bahamut, but it just works wonders against anything else with Almiris. Um, like I said, the reason why I play Arla, um, I don't know really how to explain this to make it easy, but I kind of felt like it has a really good matchup against everything, and if I play well enough, I'll do good against any deck, if that kind of makes sense. Um, the idea essentially is, if you play against a deck like Vlad, who might have a lot of chump blockers, um, when you attack, and they decide to block, you can shoot the blocker with an arrow and your damage will go through. So, you know, you have to kind of rush Vlad down, because if you give him too much time, they'll win. If you go against Rezard and they set chance standbys, you can shoot the chance standbys with the bow and kill it. If you go against a deck that might be kind of like this one and have Gwybers and a lot of kind of draw power to get to those Gwybers, then you can shoot the Gwybers and kill them without actually having to crash into it with yours or block with yours. And it essentially costs you a card that you used zero for, and they had to set up their entire Gwyber. So it just feels really good. Not to mention that with Percival's and Forces, I can get to this really quickly. I almost always have two to three and everyone's always just so overwhelmed by them, and it just works so well. And uh, having Almiris isn't a problem, which I'll kind of get into later as well. Uh, four deep blues. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the second best regalia in the game. Uh, being able to fix uh, blues mana curve while giving it all these new great cards and get, uh, making it so that you don't have to play the actual stones to be in splits range is just insane. Uh, the fact that it also thins your deck by paying two and tapping to search for an Alice Soldier I think is incredible. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know what this uh, card actually does, you can pay blue to produce red or green and you can tap it and pay two to search for a soldier from your deck. That's a one cost and add it to your hand, which is of course uh, Alice's little scout in this deck. And then you can discard it if you already have another copy and uh, you produce uh, red, blue, or green. So uh, that works really good for the colorless for the angel. Uh, sometimes when I'm at four, I really want to play it because it puts so much pressure on the opponent. So I'll just discard deep blue and pay four to summon, uh, summon celestial. Uh, it kind of seems like you would think that I'm minusing a lot because I'm kind of pitching a card from my hand and dropping Celestial, but I get dignified on the summon and um, Deep Blue most of the time is just really extra in my hand because I've been adding Alice's Scouts, I have four seeds to keep fixing my hand, it's never really been an issue. Uh, I just think this card is so amazing in every single way. And uh, three four seeds, uh, I really kind of would want to play four, but I think it'd be better in a deck like Valentina which because she can quick cast, so... If you uh, draw into something and you have two open and they attack, you also just play the Cinderella out of your hand or something out of nowhere and block and kill something. Uh, in this deck, three has been doing well. I might go to four, but I think three is just good. Uh, this card lets you draw two cards at the cost of two blue. The entire deck is blue other than Almir, so I can always use this unless I hit Almir's turn one or two, which doesn't really happen too often. Uh, it's just a great card. It fixes all of my hands. Like I said, cards like this is what makes Maribel not too effective against this deck. Um, there's been a lot of times where... My opponent would use Mary Bell and destroy my deep blue thinking, oh, now I can't generate red or green. Or they would destroy my bows and then I would just use 4C, either hit another copy of either of those cards or hit a Percival, drop the Percival and, and hit the card anyway. So um, I don't really miss with Percival and stuff often in this deck because there's so much thinning. If you think about it, uh, Cheshire lets me pick what the top card of my deck is. Often if I have like a deep blue and I don't have an angel to return, I'll just drop Cheshire, uh, put deep blue on top of my deck and then drop... Percival, and um, that's also another thing. Um, sometimes that's a really good combo if you have an extra deep blue because it ensures that one of the five cards for Percival is going to be at least that deep blue. And if you do hit another card like a bow or maybe a better beer, you can just put the deep blue on the bottom of your deck and not worry about it. There's just so much fixing in this deck, and then you don't have to worry about it. You never seeing it again because you just search an Alice Scout, Alice Scout, and your deck shuffles. It's also why the Mulligan is so good because. The cards you put on the bottom doesn't mean you're not going to see them anymore. You could just deactivate Arla and search for an angel and then your deck shuffles or search an Alice Scout and your deck shuffles. There's just so much thin uh, thinning in this deck that when you use cards like 4C, you hit cards that you want to see over just more copies of stuff you have. Um, I also decided to now change. Um, I had a different uh, couple cards. I don't really remember what they are anymore, but I decided to put in one glimpse of Kaguya. 
Uh, my friend was messing around with this card, and at first I was really annoyed because I didn't really like it. But um, up until I kind of realized it works against god abilities, so you can actually use this on something like Arla, and the god ability will just get cancelled. Something against Rezard and it will just get cancelled. Uh, I think it's really strong against Guinevere if she chooses to sacrifice herself to draw two, because then they just lose a card and they got rid of it your, um, themselves. Uh, also, because I don't have thunders in this deck, uh, I kind of if you wanted to, you could try to fit them in. I just had trouble finding the space for it, but uh, I thought the glimpse of Kaguya was really good. It just it answers a lot. Um, it also works against stuff like Death Sight from the Grave or um, uh, King the King Arthur Zombie Resonator from the Grave. So there's it's not like insanely great, but there's a lot of situations where you could just kind of stun them. Um, at one point, I was also going to beat my friend with flying from Elmiris. And he cancelled the flying with Almiris, and then it just went downhill from there, and I lost the game. So uh, that's one of the draws I actually had. Um, it was that's how he won game two because I just couldn't keep up with having to try to get flying, literally because of that one glimpse of Kaguya. So I decided to just try one out. Uh, Dream of Juliet. Uh, this is also a new addition. I didn't have this yesterday. Um, I had two blessing of the Holy Wolf in the side for stuff like fuel spells. Uh, Realm of Pure Spirits is extremely annoying. I don't know why. Um, I was I was playing against a Light Rush deck that was actually really well. Uh, he had built it really good, and he was a newer player, and I was shocked. It was putting so much pressure, but and it was the ruler was Grimia, and uh, Realm of Pure Spirits just was stopping me from doing anything. He had Achilles and Realm, and then he kept attacking with his Gwybers, and even though they were rested, I couldn't shoot them with the bow because he had Achilles, so he would just banish it to protect it. So I figured I kind of wanted a main deck answer for field spells. This also, of course, works as protection. I can also draw with it during the draw if I kind of just want to get another card. Um, it also actually helps me in a really rare situation where this isn't going to be like really useful. But if I attack with Snow White and then Blinker, I can attack with her again. So that's always a thing too. I mean, Dream of Juliet's always been a great card, so I don't mind having just one. Once again, um, it might seem weird to have so many one ofs, but with so much spinning and um with so much draw power you just have a lot of variety over just a bunch of copies of the same card which is what you normally see when you play a lot of the same cards that draw um not to mention that uh just a little kind of discussion on this real fast but people need to kind of understand a little that because our card pool is now increasing you have a lot more cards to pick from but it doesn't mean the older cards are any worse or the newer cards are specifically any better there's just a lot of great options in total and i think it's silly to think that if a new deck comes out, you're just going to run four or three or even two of everything that uh, maybe used to be good and a couple copies of the new stuff that used to be good or just four, 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 four. I mean, there's only so much space you have in your deck and I'd much rather have one ofs that are going to help in any situation and that are just uh, have a bunch of variety of uses than have, let's say, three of a card that if it didn't work the first time or it didn't work the second time, it's really not going to work the third time. So um, I like to think that that's how I'd rather play the deck. And then Azeeks, um, once again, this is just a one of. Uh, I actually think this is perfect. Oh, like I said, how Arla has a really good matchup against Rezard. This also helps against uh, shuffling back the graveyard if I need to. And of course, it negates summons, which is more important. But it's just like that option I have that just helps so much. It also lets me uh, pump up everything by 2 2, which is really great because in a situation where I have, let's say, a bunch of flyers, like let's say one of every angel or let's say two of the stronger angels and Gwyber. If I pump everything up by 200 using two blues, because I can make the blues into green with deep blue, I can still pay the two light with Arla to give another flying resonator plus two plus two. So with all the buffs, it actually really does make a difference. I think Zeke's is really great. And then I also have one Keen Sense. Uh, I decided to run Keen Sense over Cake Zone because I don't have Gretels, so drawing isn't an option. And this is just like Cake Zone, but it also hits Chance Standby, so just in case I really had to, I can. Uh, there's no real reason to run Cake Zone over this card if um, you don't have the Gretels. Uh, if, if you do have the Gretels, I think Cake Zone is still amazing, but if you don't, I think Keen Sense is just better because if they play standbys, you can destroy them. If they don't, it's still just the same as Cake Zone, so why not? And then the last two cards is two Blessing of Eudrasil. Uh, this card lets you search your main deck for a card and put it into your Magic Stone area rested. This is perfect because with Deep Blue, it lets me search out Almiris right away. Um, it, even if I hit Almiris, I can search out another Light Blue, which I only have four of. Um, it's just amazing. It's pretty much like Gretel for any card, and even though it comes in rested, that really doesn't matter with um, how easy it is to set up stuff with this deck. Um, when I side it splits against Vlad, I even use this just to grab another copy of Magic Stone of Water, just a plain mono stone, and then I eventually outpaced him and was able to put enough pressure so that he had to force his uh, uh, to tap his stones and then just one through split. 
And because I was searching the mono stones, it wasn't hurting me and I didn't have a lot of light blues. So this card is just incredible and I think it's so, so good to hit cards like Almiris and uh, maybe a light blue if you need it with the Almiris and just, it's just so good. Um, I even at one point I had two of these in a the deep blue and it had four stones, it was turn four. And I just played both of them right away, grabbed Almiris, grabbed another light blue and now I have six counters. Which means if I do have an established board, six is a really sensitive number in this deck because it means if you have at least four lights, you can J-activate Arla and use the God ability right away. And with a bunch of Cheshires, like I said, you could just force attack with the Cheshires and it keeps doing 400 and 800 and 1200. So you can essentially wipe their board with Cheshires and then get damage in with even like little scouts, Cinderella's and angels. So it's just really good. This card makes it so you can outpace your opponent and actually catch up. It also uh, lets you set up for stuff like Zeke's and stuff in the future. So if let's say you have four and I do that play and even just use one and now I have five, next turn I can go Percival's uh, Cheshire into Gwyber, leave two open for Zeke's or uh, Keen Sense. And if they try to destroy Gwyber with like a spell, I can Keen Sense it if I happen to have it. If they try to summon something, I can Zeke's it. There's just so much this card does and I think it's uh, really underrated and uh, it needs to see a lot more play. For my side deck, I have an Alice the Valkyrie of Fairy Tales. Um, this is what I set into mainly when I go against Vlad. I think it's a really good matchup because I take out the bows and put in Leviathans. Uh, it makes me be able to clear all their resonators so that I can get to their uh, life points really quickly because they normally have a bunch of like Gretels and uh, ramp cards. And the God ability lets me just swoop that all away, especially with Leviathan if they actually have bigger resonators. Um, if I have one that's 400 more damage because you tap, untap, tap again, so her God ability would do 900, which is ridiculous. That will most likely kill anything on the board. And if you have two, it's even more. So um, it's just really good. Uh, her ruler side says you can tap her to search for deep blue. So what you can, of course, do is during the turn, you do want to J-activate her. You J-activate and tap. Uh, you chase with the tap effect. So she comes in rested. On her enter, you search for a fairy tale and you grab the deep blue. So that's just a plus two right away at the cost of just two to J-activate. And then at this point, you can god ability at any point you want. You can even use the deep blue you have if you have another one to discard it to then um, blow more stuff up. So it's just really, really good. I like having access to this. And then a new addition I made was Grim. Uh, this is what I actually thought of on the train ride home after the tournament. I realized that against decks like Blazer, um, although Arla has a really good main deck uh, matchup, I thought once they side into stuff like Susano and stuff, it can make it really hard for the Gwybers. And um, I wanted kind of an answer to them really quickly. And I've been wanting to fit a Hamlin in my deck because I thought that Etna's body can sometimes feel really small because of Flame of the Outer World, but uh, Hamlin's really hard to get over unless they have Stoning to death. Plus with stuff like Dream of Juliet and whatnot, I can always protect it. So I figured I'm going to add the Hamlin, but I'm also going to add Grimm. He can also make use of all the Snow Whites and Cinderella's because he could just discard them for Cheshire's making uh, Gwyber's life if it's something that doesn't have Susano. Um, it can lead into even Rapunzel who can uh, uh, essentially OTK Vlad if um, I have a bunch of the one drop Percival's, Cheshire's, uh, Alice Soldiers. It's just really, if they can't flame this fast enough, it's going to get a lot of damage in and I think that makes the matchup really well. Uh, against Blazer also since he's mostly ran with Black, um, you can run Grim, the Avenger of Fairy Tales. Uh, this will remove all of their Dark res dark Resonators from the game, stuff like Menistopheles from Vlad as well. It just works insanely good. Um, I decided to go with two Lumia instead of two Volcanoes. Uh, I was normally running two Volcanoes, but I realized that in this, this deck, I'd much rather use not only because it's main light and I might not have deep blue, but um, I like that it's a 6-6 six, six body and it can force their, uh, if I tap attack like a tapped Elvish Priest and they block with anything, that anything is most likely going to die because their body's so big. Not to mention that uh, I find it more likely for them to have cake so nowadays because this meta is very board control heavy. Uh, having an established board is really, really important. So um, you're mainly playing resonators. And then when you're mainly playing resonators, they're most likely to use their Zeeks. And if you are, if they are Zeeks in this, it's fine. But they're normally, their cake zones are going to be stuck in their hand. So yeah, it's very likely that... Um, they'll have cake zones in their hand and if you do play a volcano late game They're most likely gonna have the cake zone whereas if they Zeke's this it's fine because then you can drop angels and other cards And they won't have the Zeke's for that So I normally feel like uh, cake zones get kind of dragged on and uh, they get stuck in the hand more But it also means they can use them on late game stuff. So if you try to set up a regalia or a deep blue or a, uh, the Volcano, it's gonna get countered whereas it's less likely to counter Lumia and that way even if they burn during draw and they um, attempt to do it again, you could just banish it to heal the damage back. And it kind of makes them think that they have to get resonators on the board instead of burning you, which can kind of just save you some time too. 
uh, three of Leviathan. Uh, I might have said four earlier, but I think I changed it to three this morning. That's why it threw me off. Uh, Leviathan is really great because it makes Alice really good. Uh, I only cite this and when I said Alice, of course, I wouldn't use this when I have Grim. I also most likely take the, the bows out when I'm using Grim. And sometimes if I can't take enough cards out, I'll just risk having the Gwyber's main deck versus Sunno. And maybe just try to um, rest it with Hamlin after he destroys my Gwyber. But this is just to replace the bows with uh, um, Leviathans when I go into Alice. Uh, leaving one uh, bow in there isn't going to happen also because I could just switch out the the uh, last bow for something like maybe a Rapunzel or a Hamlin because I can search it out with uh, Alice as well. And then um, I also have two splits. Uh, splits really good. I was running four, but I kind of felt like it was too much. Uh, I would keep hitting it with Percival and putting it on the bottom of the deck. So I'd much rather just use four seeds to try to grab this and not hit it with Percival more, more than often because you have less of it, so it's a less chance to see it. So I'd rather just keep hitting the deck with my normal play and then go into this if I'm going at something like Vlad or something that has a bunch of special stones. Uh, it's just really safe to be able to split them and not really take much damage back. And then lastly, I have three Tale of Fairy Tale. This is, of course, for Grim. Uh, people know that I, I typically like citing out rulers. It's kind of like something I've been doing in this game for a while now. Uh, I just think it's a really strong play to smokescreen them like that. Uh, Tell a fairy tale lets you put a fairy tale into play, of course, and I think it's just extremely good because a turn three Hamlin is actually really hard to get over if they don't have stoning to death in this meta. Uh, a lot of cards can't get over it, and just resting everything they have is way too strong. Uh, I think Hamlin's time to shine is like again just kind of come to the perfect time because Grubless the Flame isn't as much of a thing yet. If they are doing that. I'm totally fine with that because I have so many other big resonators like the Angels and Gwybers that it's going to be hard to just kind of respond to everything. Not to mention going into uh, Rapunzel when you have a bunch of resonators on board. Even if you can't go for the OTK against Vlad, it's just so much pressure and it's going to make them have to pay, play a lot more safer or use a lot of their resource to kill your, their, your resonators or your Rapunzels and then um, not have enough left over to also counter or also burn. And then that just kind of puts you back into the game. So I really figured like um, Arla originally, I wasn't even going to run any light. Um, somebody might have noticed that I put like a Fallen Angel build. Uh, I didn't actually post the actual build, but I was talking about one that I was making way before um, when Arla finally got uh, revealed. And my initial plan was that the bow was so good that I wasn't going to even plan on using any light for Arla. I was just going to use it for the bow because I think it's really that good. But um, I ended up using this build instead because I think water is insanely strong in this format. So um, yeah, that's the side deck. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I hope you like the new format I'm doing this um, with the whole uh, deck that's being in the description and the videos being maybe a little longer. I had a lot of comments saying that they wanted me to explain the cards a lot more thoroughly. So this did stretch on really long, but I kind of rather do that for you guys if it's going to make your play better. And instead of having to do the whole double video thing and maybe not explain as much as I should. If I did kind of uh, go really quickly at certain points, I'm really sorry. I'm really trying to talk a lot slower, but it's kind of just a little, literally a weird thing I have where I just kind of go off blabbering for a while. Um, I'm really trying to improve everything and kind of get everything uh, perfect. Um, so let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the whole new format of longer videos, but the, the uh, deck list in the description. Let me know what you guys think about the intro if you like it. If you guys want to see maybe a new template or a new avatar, I'm probably aiming to go for those too. Um, I'm not going to be revamping the old rulers uh, this time. I might really if nothing else uh, comes up, but I think there's just too much to talk about with Force of Will and everything that's been going on. So I'd much rather just focus on what's coming instead of just keep revamping old rulers every time a new set drops. Especially because it's really time consuming and that means I'm just doing deck profiles for um, like a month. So we'll see how things go. I really want you guys to let me know what you think. So please do that. Leave a comment about anything you have in your mind. If it's either a question or a suggestion, if you do like this new format more, if you'd like to see anything else, don't forget to um, make the purchase at Core TCG for $20 and put top order in the comments so you can get one of these. Uh, it's really awesome. If you see me at the store, cause I work Mondays through Fridays, uh, don't be shy to come up and say something. Um, a lot of people kind of just wave from afar and act like I'm some kind of really crazy celebrity and that's totally not how it is. Anyone that knows me, I'm really approachable and I like laughing and making really silly jokes and everything. So if you do see me working there, just uh, come up and say hello. I'd love to like talk to you guys and you know, get your opinions on stuff. Maybe you're too shy to leave a comment and you could just talk to me there. Um, if you guys don't come to the Sunday tournaments, please do. They're at 12 o'clock every Sunday at you know Core TCG. You can Google the address, but I might put it in the description. Um, it, it would be really cool because we got a, a couple new people there yesterday and it was really cool to see some new places, uh, new faces getting into the game. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so you do have all the videos coming straight to you and I'll catch you guys next time.